guys I'm back today again with another video today in this video I'm going to show you how to measure the slew rate for your circuit basically for our amplifier or the op amp circuit so let's see the setup for measuring the slew rate here is my schematic for measuring the slew rate first we can see here I apply only one signal to the positive input a negative input is short with the output. You can see here I have labeled both of them as an out, so basically they are short. Apart from that, the signal is been changed than the regular DC. Here it's a pulse. Let me show you inside. Here this is the V pulse, like you can say digital pulse, zero and one. Here is like base value of negative, uh, sorry, the base range would be 200 millivolts and the positive would be up to 1.8 the top level the pulse width would be 500 nanoseconds so like 0.5 milli and the period would be 1 nano double of 500 and this is it for the setup so let's see this uh, inside the symbol we have the same schematic that we have before the current is the same as before 17 micro so before we go ahead let's do check and save as usual go to tools and analog environment here as um, i have already saved my states so i'll do load state if you haven't um, done yet and don't know what to do let me tell you something first we go to the setup and set up the libraries for your the fet's and everything after that we go to analysis and we choose the analysis for the slew rate we need a transient analysis so like our pulse strain uh, period was one microsecond so we can set up up to five or ten whatever you like let's say for five micro don't forget to put a u at the end otherwise it will run for five seconds uh then conservative probably i don't know what it is but usually it doesn't matter i tried all of them so click that one we don't want to add noise right now so just click the conservative and apply so test will be added so here the test been added i'll load from my state so uh, let's try with this one doesn't matter so uh, this is it for the thing and let's do netlist and run so look like we have done this oh we got lots of error because I didn't load libraries so I'll do session load state because I don't want to do everything from start so I've done the libraries you can see here to another the uh, analysis there are DC and the AC I usually keep DC analysis in all of uh, all the simulation because I want to make sure that all of my FETs are in saturation I, I always check before do any analysis so that I can make sure the output is, output is in the way that I want. So let's do netlist and run. So this might by default output that I set up, it will pop up as soon as everything is done. So I'll close it so that I can tell you how it works, how to see the results. So once we get a successful simulation, go to results, direct load, and transient signal. Usually we go with the AC DB20 in CMRR, OBSR or differential gain but in this case we're gonna check for transient signal and we're gonna select the output line here click on output line as soon as you select it should be highlighted like in different color like we can see here and then press escape button on your keyboard so using that one your plot will be plotted by itself here we got the thing so let's maximize it and see how our, our slew rate is. So to measure slew rate, we usually check between the 0.8 of the output voltage bit and the 0.2. So basically 0.2 is somewhere lying in the bottom, where here. And the overall slew rate, slew rate is average of positive and the negative. Positive one is like, uh, you can say, age, uh, this age particular, the growing edge and the negative one is the falling edge so like we get uh, one at the higher one at the lower and we will check for the average one so let's do 0.2 somewhere here you can do by accurate calculation but I'll go with random values somewhere here and the B mm, this look like 0.8 out of output so as you can see here at the bottom the Delta <coughs> 
the slope slope is saying 7.044 so somewhere I can say 7 mega so it's like you can say my voltage is increasing per point uh, 7 micro volts per second and for the negative one we'll do check the same way we'll put the A at the bottom somewhere around the same point and the B at the top here so I'm getting somewhere around 11.7 so here on my negative edge my volt is dropping down by 11 volts per microsecond yeah that's a microsecond my bad it was a 11 micro volt 11 volt per microsecond and the rising edge was 7 volt per microsecond so overall I can see 11.7 I'll take a 12 12 plus 7 19 by half so we are seeing somewhere around 9.5 average slew rate that's really good though uh, approximate you uh, expect the slew rate to be somewhere around 10 which is ideal in most of the cases but this is good enough for me right now I can like improve this slew rate by increasing the uh, output current in output branch let's see in schematic uh, what I'm talking about let's close this one so here if you increase the current in this particular branch it will also increase your slew rate and as well as you can also increase on here at this side as well at the bottom tail current you can increase and see increment in the slew rate as well but on the contrary you will see slew rate will be trade off with the overall gain if as soon as you increase the slew rate your overall gain would be reduced so it's like uh, you have to decide between what you want to like to have on either side so right now and a more one more thing I have to mention here is like we are doing transient signal so you can see here the output voltage and the current in the different branches are very different from the DC simulation so don't get scared off if you see some transistor out of such a region that's a very usual thing because this is not a small signal this is a large signal analysis so this that's okay if you don't see the uh, FED working in a normal range so probably this is enough for this lurid and I hope you learn a lot from this and hope you see you in next video. Thank you for watching.